Okay, what up ladies and gents, it's your favorite Asian robot right here, hopefully a favorite Dark Tide YouTuber, and today I'm gonna go through the Hellbore last gun build that you guys have seen me using on stream. This build was originally designed by Raptoe and I've made some modifications to it, don't worry, I'll go through all of that. But the Hellbore has been amazing with the right build, and honest to god, I'm so glad that uh, Raptoe came up with the base of this because it was honestly an insane experience. I mean, take a look at this, alright? The Hellbore last gun is very good. Now this is just a Mark II. You'll do bet you'll hit more with the Mark I probably. It's up to you which one you prefer. But not only is your bayonet strong enough to stab out most targets, but Carapus Armor, which is the one weakness of the Hellbore, yeah, not really a problem. Okay? So if you have a mutie that uh, wants to stab you, for instance, you can stab him instead. This is what the Hellbore can do, and it is freaking amazing. So how do you go about constructing this build? Alright? Let me camera vanish, and I'll walk you through it. Let's start with the talent tree, okay? So for the Hellbore last gun, what you want to grab is Close Order Drill and Confirm Kill. Close Order Drill reduces uh, toughness damage when you have allies nearby you, and Confirm Kill replenishes toughness on an elite or specialist enemy kill, and gives you a further 20% toughness over 10 seconds. You can stack this up as many times as you want. Stamina boost here, toughness boost. Then you want to grab the Shredder Frag Grenade here. Okay, you can actually choose any grenade with this build, which is another flexible great thing about this, but I choose Shredder Frag Grenades because I like them. Grab your Range Damage Boost, grab Health Boost, grab Melee Damage Boost, and then grab Agile Engagement. Why is Agile Engagement so necessary? Okay, let me demonstrate this. If you kill with your last gun, you get Agile Engagement, right? If you then kill with your Bayonet, it will trigger Agile Engagement again. You see? So it's this never-ending cycle of agile engagement without ever sacrifice, without ever changing off your ranged weapon. This is something very powerful and potent, because that extra 25% damage boost helps you so much in the field. Alright, honest to god. So agile engagement is crucial for this build, and the melee damage boost helps your bayonet anyway. Then you want to come down here and grab catch a breath, grab survivalist, of course, uh, grab reload boost, Toughness Damage Reduction, Demolition Stockpile, Voice of Command, and Duty and Honor. Voice of Command will allow you to stagger enemies, and then Duty and Honor will give you over toughness, which will help you block Pox Bursters, Sniper Shots, all that kind of stuff. Demolition Stockpile helps you regenerate a grenade every 60 seconds. Always necessary. And then you want to come down here and grab Suppression Boost. Alright, so your attacks will suppress enemies better, but this is just to get the rest of the tree. Now, here is where a lot of the options in this build change. I'm going to go through the left-hand side first. On the left-hand side, I've got Precision Strikes to boost my weak spot damage, Deadshot to improve my critical rate when aiming down sights, and also to reduce sway, alright? Then I've got Fully Loaded and Superiority Complex, allowing me to deal more damage to elite enemies. Now, here's one of the options. If you really need it, grab Suppression Immunity. I have found that I do not need it, thanks to Deadshot, but if you do, don't hesitate to grab it. What can you sacrifice to grab Suppression Immunity? Rending Strikes. You'll have to sacrifice a bit of your attack power. But this will give you Suppression Immunity and therefore allow you to... You can still deal with Carapace Armor, but just not as well. As you can see, it has a rather drastic effect on your Carapace Armor capabilities. So, just be aware that sacrificing this will heavily affect your ability to deal with Carapace Armored enemies. Alright? So, Rending Strikes is a must-have. Now, when you don't have Suppression Immunity, you have to make clever use of Deadshot, so try not to run out of Stamina. Because if you run out of Stamina, Deadshot's not going to trigger, and then you, if you are getting fired upon, especially by Gunners, you're going to need this in order to stop yourself from missing the shots. Okay? So, this is pretty much how I play this build. Now, for the middle tree, what you want is for the Emperor. This will allow you to buff your entire team with 10% melee and range damage base, which is fantastic. Grab Tactical Awareness, Iron Will, this is a must-have. Grab Toughness Boost here, bring it down for Anti-Ogrin and Monstrosity. Rending Strikes, of course, for the boosted damage. You want to grab Focus Target, which will improve your uh, damage when you tag an enemy. And of course, grab Target Down, which allows you to replenish 5% Toughness and 5% Stamina for each stack of Focus Target applied to you and allies in Coherency. All right? So, yeah, this is, this is really fantastic for restoring stamina for Deadshot, and also for restoring toughness overall. And since we have this, I found Exhilarating Takedown not necessary. 
Although, one thing that was sacrificed from Raptor's build was long shot, so yeah, that was sacrificed to grab Agile Engagement. He used Exhilarating Takedown as well, but I took off the two points and shoved them in here so I could grab Agile Engagement. And that is basically the build in general, okay? So, how will you utilize this build and what equipment do you need to make this build come out? Alright, this is where it gets very interesting. You're going to spend most of your resources on the Hellbore. You can use a Mark II or a Mark I. It is exactly the same either way because they've got the same stats, perks, blessings, no matter what. But what I will say is that here is where there is a little bit of an interesting interaction with the melee weapon that we are currently <clears throat> utilizing. <coughs> oh, excuse me. There is a bit of smoke outside, so you're going to have to forgive me on that. All right. I'm going to quickly go through the melee weapon because there's only one thing you need on the melee weapon. All right. Your stats on the melee weapon do not matter other than mobility. Why? Because you're going to use the melee weapon for only two things. Pushing a pox burster and for moving around. Okay? All you need on your melee weapon is brutal momentum. You just need to grab a tactical axe or any other weapon that can put brutal momentum on. I know, everybody's like, no, you should be using a shovel for the Krieg thing. Yes, but hear me out. I don't think they've patched this yet. If they have, please feel free to tell me because I've been using this ever since last night so there have been no recent patches and it seemed to still work but if i'm wrong you know tell me because like i said i don't use mods so i can't tell but brutal momentum apparently triggers while you are using your bayonet attack this basically a lot because you're constantly hitting the enemy head with the bayonet which is really easy to do um weak spot kills will allow you to ignore enemy hit mass which is pretty fantastic all right and 15 percent extra weak spot damage is great so Again, let me know if Brutal Momentum no longer applies to your Bayonet, because as far as I can tell, it's still applying. Okay, so let me know on that. But basically, this is all your melee weapon is for. The stats don't matter, perks don't even matter. I've got sprint efficiency on this as an extra, I don't even care. Brutal Momentum is all that matters, because apparently it goes through to your Bayonet attack. I expect them to fix this um, eventually, but for now, enjoy it, if it's still working. Yeah? Because as far as I can tell, it seemed to work really well when I was doing this in Auric Maelstrom's. All right, link to the stream will be in the description of the video, yeah? So that's all you need your melee weapon for. The main thing here, and your actual melee weapon, well, your actual melee and ranged weapon, is the Lucius Mark II Hellbore last gun. Actually, do I have any skins for this? No, I don't, sad. Okay, <laughs> your Lucius Mark II Hellbore last gun is a fantastic choice as a weapon. Here's what you're going to need on it, okay? For me, what I went for is damage to Maniacs. This is so that you can two-step two a Mutie, all right? I went with range weak spot damage as well, which is pretty much fantastic since you're always going to be hitting weak spots. Surgical for my blessing so that I can have additional criticals uh, chance every, every, every 0.35 seconds whenever I'm aiming, which is pretty fantastic. And then I've got Onslaught. So the more you fire your weapon, the faster it charges. If you have this on a Mark 1, the charging time is pretty fast. I'm just too lazy to roll a Mark 1, but pretty much they're the same. The bayonet attack is also the same on both the Mark 1 and the Mark 2, so you can use either model, just depends on you. Okay? There are ver there are minimal differences between the two. Um, the Mark 1 is slightly slower charge rate, slightly more damage. Mark 2 is faster, but slightly less damage. Okay. Stats wise, damage, stopping power are crucial. These two are the most important. Ammo, anything above 60 will do. Stability, anything above 60 will do. But try to get it around 70 if you can. Charge rate, anything above 70 will do. Your primary stats are damage and stopping power. Get this as close to 80 as possible because all of this directly affects your damage. And there is no reason for you not to have this. Okay? Damage and stopping power are crucial. Charge rate, like I said, very important. But not so important that you need to sacrifice everything for it. Because I've noticed that the charge rate... Is like anything above a charge rate, if I if I'm not wrong, of 65 has a really minimal difference to the point that you're really not gonna notice it. And that's just me being very honest. So you don't really need to go for maximum charge rate. You can just go anything above 70, good enough. And with onslaught as well, the the minimal the minimum differences are really not gonna matter. So if you have a low charge rate, it's totally fine. Okay, so this is what I've been running, and it has worked beautifully for me. Alright. Now I do want to roll a Mark 1 when I get the chance, but so far this Mark 2 is the best one that I've rolled. And I rolled it yesterday, and ever since then, I've been a Hellbore fan. I have not stopped using it. Okay, now for your Curios, um, I've got a fairly simple selection, but I've gone a little bit different on this one, alright? 
So I'm using toughness, max health, and stamina. For the stamina curio, the perks are stamina regeneration, max health, toughness. Try to get all this so that you have boosted as much boosted stats as you can for auric, maelstrom, and damnation. Yeah. Then you need two gunner resistances. So I've got gunner resistance here and gunner resistance here. For this particular curio, I've gone now. I would have preferred 20% uh, gunner resistance, but this is what I rolled, so I just went with it. If you can get 20% gunner resistance and the max health one, if you get 4% versus 5%, it's okay. All right. You want to get max health and toughness regeneration speed. Why toughness regeneration speed? Because the veteran um, sometimes regenerates while in coherency of teammates, and you want to take advantage of that. As I've mentioned in several in some of the other recent videos, you don't need more than two plus 30% toughness regeneration speed curios. Going with a third one uh, doesn't really have that much impact, but I like to have at least two of these perks. Okay. Now here for the toughness curio, I've gone damage resistance gunners and toughness as well as toughness regeneration speed. Again, this is because the veteran, unlike the psyker, doesn't have a lot of ways of regenerating toughness, so it's much more important for the veteran to be able to regenerate when in coherency and besides you benefit from being in coherency with your team anyway all right because that's how you reduce the toughness damage to yourself so this is what i've got for my curios um you don't need the best of the best like you don't need 17 toughness uh 21 max health this is good enough all right and this is what i'm running on my veteran now the only thing that i will say other than this before i go through the strengths and weaknesses of this build is that if you're going to run this build you must play a creek skin so if you don't have the Creek skin, you will do 50% worse. Why? Because you won't feel the glory of the Emperor, okay? So Creek skin is a must. Now, on to the strengths and weaknesses of this build. The greatest part about this build is the fact that it is so, so ammo efficient. Why? When you kill at range, alright, it doesn't take you much. You can stab out these guys one shot, then get right back into killing. You can murder all these guys so easily, stab them out as well. You just you just end up in this cycle whereby you're regaining so much ammo from the joint melee and range attacks that you will literally go through entire maelstroms without picking up a single ammo drop. I have done it on stream and you can check that out. Plus, the next thing is that this thing is just so good and you can literally walk through hordes. Why? Because y you can just one-shot everybody. You just kill them all. Look. And the range on this is fantastic. Now, the bayonet attack has a two-stager. If you hold down the uh, attack button, all right, it'll sort of do like this uh, heavier kind of stab, all right? But I didn't really see a lot of damage difference between it. So the quick stabs seem pretty much the same. All right, just try and go for the head with the quick stabs, and you're all good. The heavy stab, like, to me, didn't really make a lot of difference. What made the most difference was just uh, shooting the target, getting a kill like that, and then shooting the target to get a kill, and then just doing this methodology where I was cycling between range and melee to take advantage of agile engagement. All right, you can sprint with the attack charged up, but like I said, it really doesn't do anything different. All right, you'll see pretty much similar damage, maybe a slight increase, let me just check. Yeah, slight increase in the damage, but um, it's really up to you if you wanna do that. Where I find this charging attack most useful is if you're running after a mutie and you really gotta stab him in the face, yeah, that's where you'll do that. Okay, so use your bayonet attack frequently. Make sure your special attack button is bound to an easy to reach key, because basically in the field, what you'll see me doing on stream is something like that. I'll go through bayonet hordes, uh, take out a special real quickly, bayonet somebody, take out some more specials, kind of like that. All right, and I'll go after the crushers. As soon as I kill the crusher, it's back to bayoneting hordes, etc., etc. Like I said, as long as you're stabbing the head, it's very easy kills. Okay? So that is basically it for the Hellbore. Now, it does have one weakness, and that is Pox Bursters. Okay? The strength of it is that you can swim through hordes. You've got this tactical thing where you can just shoot, kill, shoot, kill. But you cannot deal with Pox Bursters. So you must be very quick at swapping to your melee weapon to push back against Pox Bursters. Okay? Then swap back to your Hellbore. When you swap back to your Hellbore, there's a slight preparation. But the slight preparation should not matter much. Okay? It's just a quick click. And then you're back in. In fact, while you're swapping back, right, you don't even have to wait for the full click to finish. You can immediately start stabbing. So take advantage of that. But if I'm not wrong for the shooting, you do have to kind of wait for the full click. Yeah, you have to wait for the full click before you can charge up. So what some people will do is if they're if they're doing this, they'll stab and then they'll immediately go into shooting animation. All right. So it can save you a little bit of time. But other than that, it's just it's just a minor thing. 
if you see a pox burst, get ready with your melee weapon. All right, get ready with your melee weapon. If you need to move around quickly, you can use your melee weapon for that purpose. But honestly, I tend to just walk around with my Hellbor last gun because I like my stamina to take advantage of Deadshot. That's about it for this build. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I hope you have as much fun playing this as I have because this is seriously, this build has revitalized Dark Tide for me. Okay, I have seriously had so much fun charging the enemy with my Hellbor last gun. And here's the thing, okay, um, don't do some of the stupid things you've seen me do on stream. Okay, I know some of you have seen me charge into a gunner shooting at me just to bayonet him in the face. Don't actually do that. I do that because it's part of my stream, it's part of my show. I'm just trying to make it entertaining for you guys. And of course, there's the whole atmosphere of I'm a Krieg soldier, you know, I'm going to go in and bayonet some dude. But please don't actually do that in the field because you will get yourself killed and you're probably going to get your team killed as well. So you might want to be a bit careful on that. But other than that, it is fantastic. All right, it's a fantastic feeling to just charge the enemy and go ham. All right. Thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And now let me thank all the amazing people that have made these videos possible. Okay. I got to give my thanks to all of the lovely, lovely robots that make this amazing for us. Let's start right at the top. Here we go. Okay. Starting right at the top, we have December's top tipper, Michael Washington. Top tipper list consists of Gator Guy, Leo Reinhardt, Cheryl Danville, Nisk, BVS Fang. Um, our top super chatter is Michael Washington. Then our top super chatter list consists of Orange Shivs, Chanel Name, Ganzelope, Jonas Gustaf, Nightshade, Six Guns All. And top channel membership gifter is Nightshade and Six Guns All. Thank you guys so much. You guys are amazing. All right. Now let me go over to the members. All right. Here are the channel members that have made our shenanigans possible. These guys are the top of the top. All right. Starting at the very top, we have Nisk and Bon Schwanon as the OnlyFans. All right. They're at the top tier. We've got Death Dawning 982, Arcane Silver, Michael Washington. All right. These guys are at Plus Ultra. Thank you guys so much. We've got the following as Prestige Robots Vikram Bao, Rapto, Jellotello, Akue, Chanel Name, Six Gun, Yuri, Rogue Assassin, and Zack and FG. Thank you guys so much. All right. And thank you to all of our honored robots as well, making all this possible. We've got Kaloom, Rev Soul, Chris, Uncontrolled, Orange Shifts, Nightshade, Sleepless Night, HD Pork, Matchstick Jim, Gator Guy, Timbo, Simple Spider, Albert, Tuan Nguyen, Donald Smith, Some Dummy Head, Lu Fan, The King, Curry, Link, Octavian, Philip, You Know, BVS Fan, Commander Farsight, Atomica, Devin the Shin, Mookie Mocha, Rena, Nathan Strong, Lady Neo, Joey Danze, Sayed Asad, Code CMF, Kami SMH, and Benjamin Savage. Thank you guys so much. Thank you to all of our cool and weird bots as well. I love you guys, and I'll see you guys on the next show. All right, y'all have fun. And remember, if you don't play this build with Sabaton blasting in the background while charging in the name of the Emperor, then you don't know how to play this build, okay? See you on stream.